The plot unfolds in Columbus, Ohio, a city dealing with a growing gang problem and an alarming increase in homicides. Governor John Meserve proudly asserts that crime rates have drastically fallen, providing some peace to the difficult metropolitan scene. Nonetheless, distrust prevails, and protests break out in reaction to a contentious pipeline project plan. In an unexpected twist, Governor Meserve announces an unbiased environmental assessment, causing enthusiasm among the Hill family. This finding is especially important to Abby Hill and her family because her mother, Vivian Hill, is heavily involved in the Environmental Protection Agency's audit. Tragedy strikes when Vivian goes to the airport to pick up her husband, Stanley Hill, who is returning from a job interview. In the airport parking lot, an unknown person approaches them and requests cash aid. What begins as a casual encounter turns ominous, culminating in a vicious attack on Stanley and a fatal stabbing of Vivian by an assailant with a distinctive fly tattoo. This horrible incident has left Stanley in shock and grief. Driven by a determined quest for justice, he informs detectives Gibson and Walker about the offenders. However, their probing questions regarding his connection with Vivian exacerbate Stanley's anguish, leaving him dissatisfied and perplexed. Overwhelmed by the tremendous loss, Stanley makes a dramatic decision to flee the events surrounding Vivian's funeral, capturing the nation's attention. Governor Meserve expresses his sympathies and vows cooperation in the pursuit of justice. The next day, at the investigator's request, Stanley returns to the police station to identify those responsible for the horrific incident. After successfully identifying the genuine offender, Stanley is dealt a disappointing blow when the detectives decide to release the attacker owing to a lack of substantial proof, leaving him feeling completely powerless. In despair, he turns to his daughter, Abby, and tells her of the killer's release. Stanley, consumed with wrath at the assailant's freedom, discovers a disguised black package containing the damning relics from his past. Fueled by rage and an unshakable thirst for justice, he turns to his former friend, Dennis, for help. Dennis, fearful of the potential implications of seeking vengeance, cautions Stanley against taking this road. Undeterred by the warnings, Stanley teams up with Dennis and embarks on a journey to find the perpetrators. Their initial lead leads them to a bar, where Stanley spots Nathan, one of the attackers, handing over Vivian's stolen purse to his girlfriend. This encounter leads to a dramatic confrontation in which Stanley subdues Nathan, who hints to a hidden motivation for Vivian's sad murder. As they consider their next moves, an unexpected twist occurs. A gang member secretly records the disposal of Nathan's body and informs the notorious crime lord, Lemmy K, of the situation. In reaction, Lemmy K instructs Charlie Fly, the man who murdered Vivian, to kill both Stanley and Dennis. Faced with this approaching threat, Dennis leads Stanley to a hidden basement stocked with training equipment and a cache of weapons from their past, ready for the impending peril. Dennis hacks into a broken phone found by Nathan and discovers a contact related with the zombie tattoo shop. This relationship appears to be critical in uncovering the facts about the unfortunate incident, bringing them closer to understanding the motives behind the murder. As the story progresses, Lemmy K., the powerful crime boss, takes action. He approaches detectives Gibson and Walker, asking that they identify those responsible for the deaths of his gang members. A shocking revelation surfaces, revealing the corrupt detective's role in a diabolical collaboration with Lemmy K. They have reached an agreement to protect Lemmy K.'s henchmen from punishment in exchange for their quiet on a damaging video that could expose Governor Meserve's son. This video is nothing short of frightening, depicting the governor's son committing a horrible crime that included the murder of his girlfriend and the selling of hazardous crystal narcotics. Lemmy K. uses this incriminating tape as leverage, threatening to reveal it to the public if the cops fail to catch the perpetrators. During the commotion of the inquiry, Detective Gibson meets with Governor Meserve and explains Lemmy K.'s role in the crime. The governor, now aware of the impending scandal and the gravity of the situation, asks the detective to uncover the truth about the recent crimes. Determined to avoid the distribution of the devastating footage, the governor faces a mystery surrounding the culprit's identities and motivations, heightening the importance of the inquiry. Meanwhile, amid the continued investigation, Stanley devises a plan to face Lars, who works at the zombie tattoo business, 
only to find a new employee when he arrives. Dennis goes to the shop after hearing an alarm, only to confront Charlie and his gang. Dennis demonstrates his talents in a fierce shootout with bullets flying, eventually defeating the gang, while Charlie escapes captivity. Meanwhile, while having an I Am Wrath tattoo on his back, Stanley confronts Lars about Charlie, resulting in a heated exchange. Lars's refusal to reveal Charlie's whereabouts drives Stanley to the brink of rage. Stanley kills Lars by cutting his throat. Stanley seizes Lars's cocaine shipment, further complicating the situation. They dispose of the remains quietly with Dennis's help. Driven by tremendous guilt and anguish over his mafia history and Vivian's untimely death, Stanley seeks refuge at a church. There he unburdens his soul before a priest, admitting his faults and pleading for pardon. During the pandemonium, Abby visits Stanley's house with the intention of gathering her mother's stuff. To her surprise, Abby uncovers a slew of weaponry and gang-related paraphernalia littered throughout the property. Before they can flee, Charlie and his henchmen stage an unexpected ambush. Gunfire erupts as they fire bullets at Abby's car. Stanley comes just in time to clear the issue, but Abby is understandably upset with him. Over at the governor's residence, Meserve learns of additional casualties in Lemmy K's gang and realizes the necessity for professional assistance in apprehending those responsible. As the situation worsens, the governor takes action to handle the emerging problem. Meanwhile, Lemmy K is outraged after finding that his expensive narcotics cargo has been stolen. He issues a strong warning to Charlie, who finds himself in hot water. Unbeknownst to Charlie, Stanley, disguised in the basement of a barbershop, obtains Charlie's contact details from Lars's phone. In a smart ruse, he dupes Charlie into going to a Korean club, where Stanley and Dennis are ready to face him. Charlie's fear reaches a fever pitch in the claustrophobic VIP lounge of the Korean club. Stanley cornered Charlie and demanded explanations, causing chaos. In a state of stress, Charlie unintentionally reveals that Lemmy K was the mastermind behind the horrific incident. Stanley, driven by rage and determination, shoots Charlie, killing him. Armed men approach in on Stanley and Dennis, but with incredible coordination, they narrowly avoid capture. Back in their underground refuge, Dennis shares a frightening secret about the ruthless crime leader Lemmy K. Stanley, concerned for his family's safety, decides to shift them to a motel. When Stanley returns home, he is surprised. According to the study, Governor Meserve forced Vivian into concealing the concerns of water contamination related to the pipeline project. Listening to a voicemail left by Vivian confirms his concerns that her murder was staged to conceal the results of her environmental evaluation. As the pieces of this complex puzzle fall into place, Stanley becomes more motivated than ever to discover the truth and seek justice for his wife. Lemmy K and his gang launch an unexpected and terrifying assault on Abby and her family, putting them under intense pressure. Abby successfully transmits a coded message to Stanley, alerting him to the perilous situation. He immediately contacts Dennis for essential backup. Stanley and Dennis arrive at the location and confront Lemmy K and his scary crew, resulting in a tense confrontation. Abby is apprehended, and Dennis is shot during the conflict but his tenacity shines through as he recovers and defeats Lemmy K's assailant. Stanley engages in a violent battle with Lemmy K, determined to obtain information. The outcome of Vivian's case, as well as Abby and her family's safety, hang in the balance as they continue their effort to hold those responsible accountable. However, just as Lemmy K is about to identify the genuine murderer, crooked detective Gibson takes merciless action, shooting him in an attempt to conceal the truth. Despite the overwhelming corruption around him, Stanley remains steadfast in his objective and refuses to sacrifice his integrity. A tense standoff ensues as Gibson's backup detective, Walker, attempts a move but is quickly disabled by Dennis. Gibson's efforts to talk with Stanley fail. Stanley restrains Gibson by handcuffing him to the steering wheel of his car, while Walker is confined in the trunk. He forces Gibson to drive him to Governor Meserve's estate where a sinister web of deception slowly unravels, laying the groundwork for a final encounter. During the difficult ride, Gibson uncovers the horrific truth about the governor's illicit actions, shedding light on why Lemmy K and his allies have evaded the law. 
The disclosures have weighed heavily on Stanley as he grapples with the scope of wrongdoing. When he arrives at the mansion, Gibson begs Stanley to release him so that he talks to the governor on his behalf. Instead, Stanley renders Gibson unconscious with a heavy strike to the head. Stanley neutralizes the guards and sets up a trap for Gibson, causing the car to explode though Walker escapes from the trunk. With the impediments removed, Stanley faces little resistance in dispatching the remaining security personnel. Stanley storms into the mansion, determined to confront Governor Meserve and reveal the full scope of the conspiracy. A furious brawl breaks out within the mansion, with Meserve initially gaining the upper hand and holding a shotgun to Stanley's head. However, in a surprising turn of events, Meserve admits to the murder of Stanley's wife. He explains that he killed her because she refused to take part in his crooked schemes. Stanley, overcome with sadness and hatred, turns the tables on Meserve, fatally stabbing him, bringing their battle to a spectacular finale. News of the break-in at the governor's mansion circulated rapidly, attracting a swarm of police officers who surrounded the property. Despite almost escaping, thanks to a bulletproof vest provided by Dennis, Stanley gets arrested. After a revelation that he will be taken to a federal prison hospital, Abby sneaks into his hospital room for an emotional farewell hug, capping off this thrilling and tumultuous series of events. Later that night, two police policemen are stationed outside Stanley's hospital room, one of whom is Walker, who has been reduced to patrol duty. Nonetheless, he hides his nasty intentions as he approaches Stanley's room, with the nefarious goal of eliminating him. In an unexpected twist, Abby had left a concealed handgun disguised as a hug, allowing Stanley to defend himself. In this unexpected turn of events, Dennis, dressed as a doctor, plays a critical part in planning their daring escape. Stanley and Dennis manage to escape, finding asylum in Sao Paulo, Brazil, to avoid the unscrupulous authorities. Abby eventually receives a note from her father, confirming his safety and thanking her for her essential support. Thanks for watching. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.